Let's get right into it. This is an Xmark commercial 30 inch dual blade push mower. Data manufacturer January of 2013. So this is a very early model. I'm gonna start pulling this thing apart. Go ahead and get it cleaned up. Got a uh, homemade pull handle there. And I still gotta get a video on this big beast too. This is a uh, cut quick brush mower. Hopefully you can follow along with me here and we're gonna make this thing look like brand new. I'll show you a good way to clean all this plastic up. This will paint. You can buy this Xmark red, but it's like $30 for a spray can. And I just refuse to pay that much. Two colors that people have told me are a pretty close match are Regal Red and International Farm Implement Red. We'll go ahead and pull this cover off here. And this is a 3-8 socket. The best way I've found to get these covers off is to pull them out on this right side. Kind of push it over that way. Slide it past that bar. And then you can kind of roll that out of there without taking that front bar off. We got a little bit of dirt and grime down in here, but these belts do look like they've been replaced. Another thing to look at here when you got this cover off, these gears are plastic, the timing gears. Make sure that the teeth aren't damaged on that because I am gonna be painting this thing, cleaning it up. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this guard off here. These are all half inch on this. And you do have to take one of these bolts out on the side because you can't get it off of these studs. If you're not familiar with these wheels on these things either, they're super easy to change the height you want to adjust them to cut. Pull that up, you can slide that out. To get these front plastic pieces out for your front wheels to replace these, it's got a single bolt right here. This requires a deep well 9 socket to get these out of here. You can just come in from underneath. Might take a little persuasion, but it will come out. What I did is just take a 3 8 extension and pushed it through there. Pick that up and it'll fit right through there. No! Not much to them when you get them all stripped down. Take this screw and the one on the other side out and that makes it easy to get this little piece of plastic striping strip out of here. Just kind of bend it in there and that'll pull right out. One thing to keep in mind on these mowers is Xmark actually recommends to change the oil on them. You pull the dipstick out and actually tip this over to change the oil. Now I'll show you later in the video, there is a plug down here and there's a company that sells an adapter so you can screw it in there and it has a tube where you can drain this. It's about a $20 investment but it makes it much easier to change the oil in the future. I'll also show you something else here that comes in handy. This is an oil vacuum pump. Basically you stick the tube down in the dipstick and then you pump this and it creates a vacuum and it sucks the oil out through the dipstick put that down in there I've got an adapter here because the main hose won't fit all the way to the bottom you can get these on Amazon too I'll create a link to it down below but basically you just pump that up and then you'll see the oil start to come out of there go ahead and flip this thing up here so I can show you how to get the transmission out from under it once you get this upside down where you can get to it you got a few things to take loose here the spring has to come off you've got two bolts on this bracket right here and you've got a nut right there that holds this spring down. Before I pull this transmission out of here, I want to show you how to change this drive belt too. It's pretty easy, especially if you got your mower upside down, drain the fuel, drain the oil out of it. And this tool comes in real handy. Gives you a good place and leverage. It's got a hook. Hook underneath this right here. This helps a lot to put this spring on and off, but you can just pull that up out of there. Be careful with that if you're using pliers because that is a pretty stout little spring. But what that does allows you to rotate this transmission and that drive belt will pull right out of there. Really a lot easier than some people realize to change this belt. 
One thing I'll add to that too is if you're having problems with your transmission, feels like it's slipping, check this belt first before you think it's a transmission problem. Pretty much anything I'm doing in this video, you can look down in the description and find the parts or tools you need. If you're going to be taking this loose to get your transmission out, you don't have to take all this stuff on the sides loose. But what you want to do is take your wheels and put them in the lowest cutting height possible. And that allows this axle to go up as far as it will. And it'll take as much tension off of this spring as you can without taking everything loose. Yeah, since I've got that axle loose on the side, there's really not much tension on this spring at all. This is the spring that helps you raise and lower your mower. This is the spring for your uh, lever here. Keeps tension on this, so you got to take this spring loose there too. That's going to be a fun one to get back on. You guys are remembering how all this came apart, so you can tell me, right? Now, the only thing holding us now should be this cable. We got to disconnect that, and the transmission and the old axle will come right out of here. Well, it's just got a spring clip on the inside of it here. You just have to push that together. Just pull that out of there, slide that up through there, and then unhook it down here, and you're free. What I want to do now is just get a color match here. Now, I've already ruled out the Regal Red. I don't think that's a very close match just from other things I've painted. But International Harvester's Red. I'm going to do a sample here on this thing and just compare it side by side. I'll take a small piece of masking tape here just to keep a good defined line. And this is underneath that back plastic cover, so none of this will ever show. You can kind of see on the lid there, but what I'll do is just take a Q-tip. Just put a good amount of this on here. This will give us a good idea if this is a good good enough color match. I know some of you diehard Xmark fans will think I'm crazy for not just spending the money on the Xmark Red, but I guess it's just more of a principle than anything. We'll let that dry. I'll go ahead and pull the tape off now. I mean, initially it looks pretty darn close, but we'll see what that looks like after it dries. While we're waiting on that spot to dry, I'll just take some more prep ball and go ahead and wipe the rest of this thing down. And you want to do this before you start doing any sanding or wire wheeling or wire brushing to get all the oil off of it so you don't embed some of that oil down into the paint. And I'll probably go over it a couple times as dirty as this one is. There's a spot right there. Definitely a little bit darker. Not sure how well that's showing up on the camera, but that is dry already. There's our paint spot from the same angle I showed you the first time. It's not a perfect match. It's a little bit darker, but it's close enough to make it work. Something else I will say here that I do not plan on doing, but if you want to separate the two halves on this thing, you can pretty easily separate these two halves. You got a bolt here, four on each spindle. You can buy replacement decks for these. They're about 350 bucks at the time of this video, but they are available from Xmark. Come with all the decals and everything. I'm trying to dodge the rainstorms here, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff pressure washed off before I start cleaning it up to paint it. All right, I mentioned earlier I'd show you a way to make this plastic look new again. I actually showed this in another video I did on the GT262 restoration, and I was surprised how many people commented on it that had never seen it. I did it on the fender flares in that video, but basically all I do is just take a propane torch, and all that's doing is just kind of burning off that surface oxidation. And then when I'm done doing this with the flame, I take a product called Coverall, which is kind of like an Armor All type product that just puts some gloss on it and makes it look a lot newer. You want to do that really fast. You don't want to sit in one area too long. You don't want to get it hot enough that it melts the plastic. All you're trying to do is burn that surface oxidation off. If you hold your torch in one spot long enough that you see smoke, you held it there too long. Not going to be perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than it was. And then once we take the cover all and put over that, it will shine almost like brand new. All right, got all the plastic parts cleaned up. Did put some cover all on those parts. And I did strip down all of the black pieces. 
including the engine cover and the housing, all the braces. I also went ahead and pulled this rear end completely apart, so I'll show you the proper way to put this back together without taking all this bracket and lifting mechanism off. I'll show you how I mix up the paint from the court. First thing is we gotta get all this loose paint and everything cleaned off of this thing and stripped down. And then we're gonna prime this thing and we're gonna paint it. On the Rust-Oleum paint, you can also mix that with mineral spirits, but I prefer to use acetone, and I mix it a lot thinner. I mix this at a 50-50 mix, and I know that's a little extreme, but I think the acetone gives it a better gloss, and adding more acetone gives it less likely that you're going to get any runs, and I think it just gives it a really nice finish. I'll do 12 ounces of paint, 12 ounces of acetone. The other thing I do on my spray gun is I turn my pressure way down. I sprayed that primer probably about 28 to 30 PSI which is on the high side it really lays it down on paint i'll turn this down to about 14 or 15 pounds 12 ounces and that is a lot thicker than the primer probably ended up with about 13 ounces there by the time that funnel ran down so i'll go ahead and mix this up still 50 50 but i'll take it up to about 26 ounces Now I did get my pattern and my pressure adjusted on this little side cover thing. I'll start in an area that's really not seen very much, so I'll start down in here and across the back. And if I need to do any more fine tuning on my pressure or my uh, paint spray here, I'll do that at this point. Definitely not gonna cover as good as the primer thin down this much, so we'll probably put two or three coats on this one. real light coat we'll let that set up a little bit and I can already tell this one's gonna need three coats just by the way that one covered before I get too much of this thing put back together I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to pull this drain plug out and replace it with the drain tube drain plug is a three-quarter inch you can do this without taking this oil filter adapter off Get your wrench in underneath there. It's a plastic plug, so just be careful you don't strip it off or round it off if you don't have the right size tools. And I've got the oil drain, plus I've got this mower tilted up so that any oil that was left in there is run to the other side of the engine. Now when you change these on these Kawasaki engines, they do have a pretty unique plug. So make sure you get the right part number. In this case, it's uh, 142-K. It's not a pipe thread or anything like that. And then just stick that in there and thread that in there. That would be easier if you want to take that oil filter adapter off, but you don't have to. That doesn't have to be real tight because that does have an O-ring on it. And then that's pretty much all there is to it. When you want to store this, just put it in there like that. When you need to drain the oil, you just pull this out, remove this cap, and then you just drain your oil like that. Makes it much easier than having to suck it out of the dipstick or try to turn this thing over on its side. I'll leave some contact information down in the description of this video for a gentleman you can contact to get these. He sells them for all different kinds of mowers. I went ahead and put these adjustment plates back on the side. What I'll do here is I'll show you how you would take this transmission in and out if you're not taking all this loose. Now the first thing I'll do is go ahead and get this cable hooked back up. You can do this after it's in there, but it's just easy if you go ahead and do it while it's down here. Pull that in there, and then just push that back in there. 
main thing you need to do to get this transmission in and out is take these bearing housings out it fits in the side there just pull that out on both sides you can go ahead and get everything lined up here with this spring and go ahead and slide that through the hole slide it all the way over that way as far as you need to and then come through this side over here the same way and then slide this all the way through and make sure you've got this spring wrapped around this bar and in the right spot and make sure this bracket lines up here you can go ahead and put this bearing back on here and then once you get that in there put your bolt back in there so this side doesn't come back out while you're working on the other side and then come on back around the other side and then go ahead and get this lined up put your bolt back in here When you put this little plate back on, this goes on with these slots facing away from the spring. So the flat side or the uncut side goes towards the spring. That goes on there like that. Tighten that down. Put your bolts back in this. All right, once you get all your bolts in there, take this. Drop it down in behind that transmission, put it around the pulley on your engine. I should have left this little bracket stop off here so I could rotate this a little farther, but you can bend that just enough to get that transmission to clear that, and then it makes it a lot easier to get this belt back on. And then just make sure you push that back in front of that little stop there. And then last but not least, we got this fun little spring to put back on here. Just hook that down in there like that. Pull this up. This is a very stout little spring. Drop that back down in there. That's pretty much everything we need to do under here. Then we got to come back out here and put our gears and stuff back on. On the side here, make sure you've got equal amounts sticking out on both sides for your axles. So slide it back and forth depending on where you need to be. There's a washer goes on here for a spacer, your gear, and then you've got a snap ring that goes on here. And that's pretty much the way that's done on both sides. Just make sure that snap rings all the way on there. All right, once you get your gear on there, take this plastic cover and put it on there. And this plastic cover does fit over a little lip right here. Slide that on there. Make sure that centers up. And then you put the washer over the axle here and slide that back in there. You may have noticed when I took this wheel out too that this bearing got stuck on the shaft so make sure that's all the way down in the wheel when you put this back on there. And once you get that on there the nut goes right on here. There is no washer on this. And same thing on the other side. Go ahead and put this cover on while we got this guards off. Makes it a little easier to get it in here. If you've got your gas tank off, it's much easier to put it back on before we put this cover back on the back here. Two things to keep in mind when you put this back cover on. Your cables go over the top of this, and this has to go under the front cover. Slips under it right here and you got to line these holes up to get your bolt started. Okay, go ahead and put all the guards back on. Got that all back on there. Got the handle hooked back up. Now you get some stickers on this thing and then I'll show you a complete walk around on this thing after it's done. That turned out to be a pretty long process to get this one to where it's at right now, but I think this thing looks about as good as it's ever going to look. Probably looks as good as it did when it was new. We'll take it out here and try it, but this engine runs extremely well. Blades have been sharpened and balanced. Fresh oil, new oil filter. Tires were replaced shortly before I got it. Put our new oil drain tube on there. Thanks for watching, guys. I really do appreciate it.